If you're thinking about cosmetic surgery, one of the things that often comes up is how much does it cost? Maybe you're thinking about a rhinoplasty or a nose job. How much does that cost? Well, there's a lot of things that go into that. There's a lot of variability between surgeons, even between different surgeries. Oftentimes the goals are different, so it's not just one surgery for everybody. So today we're gonna to talk about all those questions that you may have had and haven't had the chance to ask about a rhinoplasty. My name is Peter Vila, and I'm a facial plastic surgeon. Now, one of the most common questions that comes up about a rhinoplasty is how much does it cost and is it covered by insurance? So one of the ways to think about rhinoplasty is that there are functional rhinoplasties and there are cosmetic rhinoplasties. Functional rhinoplasties are really for functional reasons, meaning breathing issues, or if you were in a car accident and now your nose is crooked, or if you're a boxer and you, know, you were punched in the nose and it was broken and now it's crooked. All of those are functional reasons to have surgery, meaning you can't breathe through your nose or there's a disfigurement to your nose and you're gonna have surgery to correct that. A cosmetic rhinoplasty, on the other hand, is just changing the shape of your nose because you just don't like the shape of your nose. If you have a big bump on your nose or if it's really wide or maybe it just sticks out too far, all of these are common cosmetic complaints about rhinoplasty. And Insurance is never gonna cover those. Why? Because they see that as elective surgery. They see that as not something medically necessary. For a functional reason, meaning you cannot breathe through your nose or you had a trauma, maybe you suffered a car accident and your nose is broken. In that situation, insurance usually will cover a rhinoplasty because it's considered a functional rhinoplasty. You have a disfigurement resulting from an accident and then when you go in for surgery, it's, it's to correct that disfigurement. In that situation, insurance will cover it. And oftentimes that's really great in terms of bringing down the cost of surgery. Now, there will always be a copay associated with that. And that still is only the functional part. So what about the cosmetic part? So when we're talking about elective surgery, especially cosmetic surgery, it's never medically necessary. This is something that is purely done because it's bothering you and because it's affecting your self-confidence. And that's why most people choose to have cosmetic surgery because it's altering the normal quote unquote appearance, right? There's nothing wrong with your nose. You just feel that it's a little bit too big and you're willing to pay to have someone change the shape of your nose. That's a cosmetic surgery and that will never be covered by insurance. Now, oftentimes, it's nice to, if you're going to have a rhinoplasty and you do have functional reasons for getting surgery, meaning that you can't breathe through your nose, maybe your septum is really crooked and on the inside of your nose, the septum is not letting you get airflow in through your nose and so oftentimes during surgery, we will straighten out the septum. That's what's called a septoplasty and oftentimes during a rhinoplasty, I will do a septoplasty as well. The material we use in the nose for doing that that's your own body's material and that lasts forever is cartilage. When we do a septoplasty, we use that cartilage to make those changes that we want to. Most surgeons out there will be doing rhinoplasties under general anesthesia in the operating room. This means that it's done either at a surgery center or at a hospital where there's an anesthesiologist or an anesthetist that's taking care of you during surgery, making sure you're safe while you're asleep and the surgeon is doing the surgery. So if we're going in and we're doing both a functional and a combined rhinoplasty, then what we're doing is we're straightening out the septum and then we're using that cartilage to make those changes and so that's the cosmetic part of the surgery. And so insurance will often pay for the functional part, but they won't pay for the cosmetic part. And what does that mean to you? So the cost of surgery has to factor in the cost of the, the facility, meaning the hospital or the surgery center, the anesthetist, either the CRNA or anesthesiologist, and the surgeon. So there's three different fees that go into making up that number that you're gonna have to pay when it comes to your surgery. If you have a combined functional and cosmetic rhinoplasty, meaning there's a medically necessary reason to to do surgery, but you're also gonna do some cosmetic stuff while you're there. Insurance will generally pay most of the facility fee and the anesthesiologist fee, 
and then the surgeon fee can come down because most of the other things will be paid for. So that generally will help you with the cost of surgery. There is still, usually the way we talk to surgery centers and hospitals about it is that we will allot a certain amount of time for the functional part and the cosmetic part. So we'll say two of those hours were for the functional part and one hour was for the cosmetic part of surgery. That allows us to have a very clear understanding and communicate clearly with the hospital or the surgery center what we were doing in the operating room. That's great because that will bring down the fee for you. So if you're thinking about a rhinoplasty and you have trouble breathing through your nose or something like that, it will bring down the cost of the cosmetic rhinoplasty because most of those fees will be taken care of by your insurance company. Another question that often comes up is, do you have to pay for your surgery up front? Now this is gonna be different for every surgeon, but most surgeons will require you to pay the fee up front prior to the surgery. And this is simply because you're trusting a surgeon to operate on your nose, take care of you while you're under anesthesia for three hours, and to do something that they've spent years training how to do. And so you're putting a lot of trust into this person. We're just asking you to reciprocate that trust so that you just pay for the procedure prior to it actually happening so that we don't have to chase you down afterwards. The other question that often comes up is, is it worth it? The only person that's gonna be able to answer that question is you. There's always complications associated with surgery. There's always risks involved. Some of those risks are things that you may not even notice after surgery and that a year from now you won't even remember. You might have a nosebleed, you might have a little infection. These are things that we can manage. But if you really don't like the shape of your nose or if you can't breathe well through your nose, those are complications that are gonna stick with you and those are usually things that are gonna require another surgery to correct. And the whole point of you doing this is to just have one surgery to fix whatever it was that was bothering you in the first place. So when we talk about things that will leave you unhappy after your surgery, that's really what we're talking about. So as the surgeon, I wanna make sure that we are crystal clear on what your expectations are from surgery, meaning the shape of your nose, what it is that we're actually gonna do, whether we're gonna be making an incision under your nose, all of these details are things that we talk about during the consultation. And it takes a fair amount of time to come to terms as far as you know what it is that you want and how we can get you there, whether that's feasible. So a lot of those details are what's gonna take up that, con that consultation. And so it's, sometimes it's difficult to throw in the financial part of it too. So hopefully this video is helpful to show you how much detail you're gonna need to talk about during the consultation and might help you understand some of the financials too so you don't need to take up time during the consultation talking about that. So when we're talking about the cost of surgery, it's not just a one size fits all. Every surgery is gonna be different from person to person and the goals are gonna be different and whether it's your first surgery or a revision surgery, meaning you've already had surgery once and now you're getting another surgery to fix it, that will increase the amount of time it takes in the operating room to safely do that surgery because things are much more scarred down and generally we're gonna have to get cartilage from somewhere else. So when you watch shows like Botched and shows on TV that show rhinoplasties, oftentimes they will take a rib graft and use that as a great source of cartilage We'll use that cartilage to, to place it into the nose where we can kind of get the shape that we want. That adds a lot of time in the operating room and expertise in the operating room. Not everybody knows how to do a rib graft revision rhinoplasty. So when you factor that into your cost, it, it will increase the cost just because of the amount of time and expertise that's required in the operating room to do that surgery safely. I would not recommend choosing a surgeon based on cost alone. If you're getting a great deal, obviously that's great. No one wants to spend more money than they need to, but you wanna make sure that you trust the surgeon, that your expectations are being heard by the surgeon, that you're seeing eye to eye on what you are gonna get out of surgery. You're gonna have a relationship with the surgeon through the surgery, after the surgery, and God forbid there's any complications, that surgeon should be the one to manage those complications. So you're gonna have a relationship with this person. You wanna trust this person. And so it should be somebody that you have a good feeling about and that you trust, not just based on cost alone. So now that we understand some more detail about what influences the cost of surgery, what is the actual cost? Well, I'm just going based on what I've seen other surgeons tell patients that I've spoken with. I've seen in some cases it can be as low as $4,000, and in some cases it can go up to fifteen dollars or $20,000. You have to understand that this is something that people have trained literally their entire adult lives for, and so that cost is not so much the three hours that you're in the operating room, you're paying for somebody's expertise that's been doing this for years. 
And so whether or not it's your primary surgery or your revision surgery, revision surgeries will always be much more expensive because they take longer. And what kind of goals you're going for in the operating room are going to increase or decrease that cost. So again, anywhere from a few thousand dollars up to like 15 or $20,000, maybe even higher. In general, I think most people are gonna be somewhere in that range and it just comes down to those things. So hopefully that's helpful. If you have questions, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for checking out this video.